I want to thank everybody for tuning into this episode of the Black Tremont Chronicles. My name is Dion Tucker, and I'm extremely excited about this episode because I have my first female guest, the great Robin Smith. Robin is a graduate of the New England Conservatory. She's still studying there. And she also recently won a job with the Michigan Opera Orchestra. Uh, we're going to learn a lot from the Black female perspective. I can't wait to share this with you. Robin, how you doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here and talk with it, you. It's an absolute honor to have you. When I started this series, I was like, I have to get some sisters on here because that Amen. perspective is just something... <laughs> we don't hear too often. So I'm really glad that you were able to come on and share your experience with us. Um, so Absolutely. really thankful. Um, if you could uh, start a little bit by telling us how your whole journey with music and playing the trombone started. Okay, so I start, start, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, uh, definitely uh, inner city area, um, all of my like, uh, schooling was title one schools um but other than that i um my i have two older brothers and they were both into music my um the middle brother was a percussionist and trombone player and also my older brother was a trumpet player okay. and so we, we all grew up in the church and my oldest brother was in the choir, played piano, and it was just this whole sort of yeah. thing. My, and my also, uh, my brother played the drum set at, at, wow. at, um, at church. So um, I was introduced through, to music through them. And my brother was sort of serious with percussion and he started to um, be a part of the like district orchestras in Atlanta and jazz ensembles and things of that nature. And I would sort of tag along with my dad to all of those trips to rehearsals and, mm -hmm. and concerts and things like that. So the discipline and um, sort of like passion sort of came from me watching that. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting. I always wondered what it would be like if I had a sibling or just anybody that played music. I was like the kid in my room by myself yeah. practicing like, you know, they they yeah. all thought I was weird, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I always wondered what that would have been like um, when you started. Uh, how did you wind up picking the trombone? Is it because you saw your brother playing it or was it uh, through school? Funny story. So my brother actually started playing trombone after I played trombone. It's oh. so crazy. Uh, he started with percussion. But um, so in fourth grade, I remember going to uh, sort of like the elective classes where you get, get to choose an instrument, you get to go to art class and mm -hmm. Spanish and all those things. And so I remember um, there being like clarinet, saxophone, trumpet and drums so like <laughs> and then there was like a trombone so then i i saw everyone everyone gravitate towards like trumpet saxophone and those instruments and i was like well i don't want to do what everyone else is doing I'm gonna play this. <laughs> and then in fifth grade i was like okay um my dad for some reason i still don't know he bought me a pocket trumpet okay <laughs> and so i switched to trumpet in fifth grade Hmm. And um, so I'd been fooling around with that. And then I got to middle school. My band director's name is Robert Jeffrey. Okay. He's like, we need more females on brass instruments first. But he's like, we need some female trombone players. Hmm. He's like, he's like, I don't want to hear the, I was like, I play trumpet. I was like, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. He was like thinking long term. He's like, yeah. like trombone was like sort of a rare instrument, like kind of back then, not a lot of people played it. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, look, you can do really well. And if you get an all female trombone section, I'll get Beyonce to come. I was telling the story. <laughs> And so, <laughs> that's incentive there that's yeah incentive. yeah I mean 
Beyonce kind of went in one ear and went out the other, but I was just right. like, oh, so he's 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 serious about me playing. So cool. I'll, I'll just play right. from Bone. <laughs> and so, <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Beyonce never came, even right. though we had you know female trauma section. But it, you know, it was it was wow. the thought and the intent. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I always wonder like how much our band directors are kind of trained to trick us into playing the trombone because I wanted yeah. to play trumpet but they went alphabetical order so when they got to yeah. Tucker no more trumpets so they was like okay play the trombone in the regular year this was in middle school you can switch mm -hmm. to trumpet once that regular year came it was like you know what you sound great on trombone. You're a yeah. just stay there. You know, I think band yeah. directors are like, I need trombone players. So yeah, I'll get Beyonce. Just yeah, stay on trombone. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, especially like when we're 10, 11, 12, we don't, you know, we yeah. just don't gravitate towards the trombone for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I think like once we start, sometimes it kind of picks us and it's like, I'm oh, so yeah. glad I don't play anything else. Oh, so man. Glad literally yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so you did have an all-female trombone section in middle school in middle school and in high school because I went to the wow. feeder school in my middle school and so all of us it was like a gang all of us kind of just went to uh the high school and we had this section um it ended up being more female than male once we got wow. to high school because obviously it's a bigger school more people more pull of people but yeah, it was, it was pretty Wow, awesome. wow, you just don't, uh, I don't hear of that too often. The only time I've seen like majority female trombone sections is in like Japan, um, mm -hmm. the Japanese school system. It's mostly girls in the band. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it's pretty amazing just to see that. Um, it, they take a lot of pride in that. So that's great yeah. to know that it was here, you know, in the States. Um, so yeah, what was that? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying like, yeah, it's definitely something that I didn't think was something that was rare. I was just like, oh, this is, cause this is what I grew up around. So this is normal. Yeah. all of us were black. And so it was just like, wow. yeah, like all of them are <laughs> friends, you know, it was, it was normal to me. So. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so talk about the, the contrast now of moving on into higher education where I can almost guess at New England Conservatory that the trombone section was not all black females. So <laughs> knowing that that is the case, what was that shift like going from starting being around females, being around African-American females, now you're stepping into this whole new environment? Like, what was that like? Yeah, so... I did sort of before higher education, I got a glimpse of it when um, I went to sort of Allstate and um, I was in Atlanta um, Symphony Youth Orchestra and AYWS and all things like that. Um, I got a glimpse of, I was sort of mostly the only black trombone player and then uh, maybe the only female. And mm -hmm. so um, those experiences, although they're maybe once a week, or once a year, maybe all state, uh, they still had me feel like, sort of like realize that I need to make, needed to make an adjustment. Mm. Um, however, going to Boston in like, before I even get to NEC, going to Boston from it, from Atlanta is, oh, it's crazy. It's crazy yeah. in a sense <laughs> that, you know, Atlanta is the black Mecca right yeah. so yes. the, everybody around you um that is of brown or black skin is excelling and only expects you to excel right, right. so there's this mindset of like um it, it's like black i don't want to say elitism but it's just like this is you don't have a choice but to be great okay yep. <laughs> cool yep. Yep. <laughs> <Black> <laughs> you know excellence. what i mean <laughs> yeah, finest, yeah yeah so um then going to Boston and um, realizing that uh, the black or brown people there, it's not the same mindset, but it's also you realize like there's some systemic things that just aren't set up for people to excel here. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's what I realized from the, the sort of near like community. Mm -hmm. um, then going into NEC um, with being like, I, there were four black, the most black female um, student representation at NEC 
um, I remember there are five of us. Wow. Five. And five. <laughs> wow. That was the most of like, there's the most of us being there at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you're talking about the whole school that's jazz. Um, that's classical, that's contemporary improvisation, that's vocal, that's <laughs> instrumental, <laughs> you that's know, opera wow. department, um, wow. composition, that's everything. So yeah. it's, um, wow. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's believable though, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the, that's the thing. It's like, when we sometimes say these things, we're taken aback, but like, mm -hmm. how could that be? But then it's like, oh, of course, that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but just to hear it, you know, it, it, it's taken me aback to think, think that of that body yeah. of that school of how many great black musicians there are, that yeah. only five at one time were there. That's like, Five females, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. heavy. <laughs> that's really heavy. Um, and it's just like, I think I was kind of used to being the only uh, Black female in the brass area um, mm -hmm. because when outside of my, like, community, like, Atlanta, like, um, close-knit community, when I would go outside of Atlanta to district, all state, I was mm -hmm. used to that. Yeah. Um, so be, that being the case at NEC wasn't really mind boggling. It was just not having really a community outside of that. Because in, when I'm at, back at home in Atlanta, um, I could go to district and go to rehearsals every week and things like that. And then at the end of the day, I go back to Mays High School and be with my people, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but at NEC, it's like, well, it's only you here. And yeah. it's only you there and there. And then you go to Fenway and it's only you there. And right, then you go, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, um, but I, I can say that um, my black female friends that I did have there, wow, were we close? And mm. um, was it special to have those uh, specific people in my life? And uh, it, you know, made, everything else a little bit easier. Um, I can't say like, what if I didn't have anybody, then that'd be different. Um, right. But I, to have some, something and somebody is, is really important. And we were very um, uh, committed and diligent about uh, sort of like our blackness on campus and like sort of um, expanding that. Yeah. Um, yeah, how do you feel like, I'm sorry, how do you feel like, um, that having that community even outside of the conservative because I would assume some of these people were outside of the conservatory um or well I mean I guess everybody's in the conservatory but mm -hmm. like how does that push you to be like better <laughs> you know like how did that inspire you to in your lessons and your and everything like I'm here representing one of the few you know, how does, how did that kind of, or did it push you to, to be work even harder? Um, I think initially it didn't push me. It, it was kind of uh, intimidating. Hmm. Um, uh, because I didn't, I didn't have, I was so used to having like representation and people to look up to um, around me and think hmm. people to sort of uh, bounce out off of that when I went into a space where I no longer had that um, it was a little bit dis discouraging and also intimidating mm -hmm. I think when I I didn't start to sort of like own um, me being like the only one and like sort of like look like let's represent until maybe later on in my undergrad maybe like uh, my junior year, so, uh, senior year. Mm -hmm. um, but that sort of played into me being like um, involved on campus, like with the Black Student Union. And like, I found like me having something to stand for, like sort of validated my my presence. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, like let's, Robin, let's do this. You know what I mean? Yeah, but before yeah. then, it's just like, 
I was, I can say that I was a bit lost. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all kind of go through that period of kind of you know because a lot of people don't know like I actually was born in Boston I lived there until I was eight and then I moved to Miami Florida which is drastically different um and then came back to New York so New York was kind of and moving to Brooklyn was it was a little shocking you know mm-hmm. different it was different than Miami it was like bed back in the day before bed now which is totally different you know yeah. um but it, it, it took that like adjustment period. And fortunately, I had some friends that I started playing music with. Um, mm-hmm. We started in middle school together. They were already here in New York. And I was able to kind of find that community, you know, um, and then the same similar thing, you know, the empowerment mm-hmm. came after that. But at yeah. first, it, it's you're navigating your way mm-hmm. because you're in these new environments. And like you said, you're coming from something where your people are close to you. (laughs) You know, you have that home base. And when we step outside of our home base, I think a lot of people don't understand how you kind of have to build a new family, you know, a new community of people of all races that understand where you're coming from in order Mm -hmm. to help you move forward to where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, now, as you step into, uh, are, are you doing like any professional kind of things like that while you're studying? Like, are you getting to work as a professional on the scene a little bit in the Boston area? And if so, did you find yourself as the only African American in any of these situations? And how did that kind of make you feel? How did you uh, handle those situations? Yeah. Um... Let's see, the orchestra gigs that I get in um, sort of like community regional orchestra gigs I get in Boston. um, Mostly, I'm mostly the maybe one or two, three, four black people in the orchestra. (laughs) Um, uh, I did a gig uh, maybe two years ago at the American Repertory Theater. with this, uh, the pit orchestra is like uh, this sort of like New Orleans style mixed with opera, mixed with jazz, mixed with gospel type of wow. um, production is called Black Clown. And that that production, all black people, maybe mm-hmm. like two or three uh, pieces of salt, but like mm-hmm. everything else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything else was melanated, which was really, yeah. that was really interesting. And that was a professional gig I did for a month um it seems like um boston is sort of like as all the you know major cities are trying to pick up on this whole diversity thing and so like um the past like two or three months like right before covid i just happened to have a lot of uh gigs with a um a few more like black and brown people within the the orchestra which was really encouraging i think that had um all to do with the contractor Hmm. i think he was intentionally trying to seek a variety of musicians which i really appreciated so um but like years prior to uh 2020 um I, yeah, one of three or four. Yeah, yeah. That happens so, so often with me um, being a young, I, I think it was my skill set. You know, a lot of times mm-hmm. when you step into, and, and this stigma still goes on in, in the jazz community that, you know, African American musicians aren't the best readers. There might mm-hmm. be great soloists, but they're not. I, I mean, that I don't know how that plays in the classical community, but in the jazz community, it's it's definitely yeah. a thing. Um, so I was fortunate to have a teacher that like reading was one of the most important things. You know, mm-hmm. so when I came to New York, I could read. Um, yeah, and, and when I stepped into situations like I could handle myself, but because of that, I was a lot of times one of the few, you know, mm-hmm. in these different situations. Um, yeah. And similar to like that, the show that you were talking about, when I got to, I did a lot of subbing on Broadway for this show called After Midnight, which mm-hmm. was a Duke Ellington revival. Oh. And the show was all black. Like yeah. everybody yeah. was black, except mm-hmm. for like, you know, two or three people. 
Yes. Um, and I tell you, like, first of all, for that to be on Broadway, it, it just is very rare that you get an all black show, all black cast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Band, like band is on stage, you know, mm -hmm. you very rarely get that. But when one of the most amazing things was whenever I would walk in the theater, there was like a trio of tap dancers and these brothers would be in full tap sweating Ooh. before the show. Like yeah. for at least 30, 40 minutes, they are going absolutely as hard as they can and then go <laughs> out and kill the show, wow. <laughs> you know? And it was just like, man, you know, being in that space, in that environment, you know, people, I think people of other races maybe take it for granted because they're never the only ones in the band that are of oh, that yeah. race, you know? Oh, so yeah. It's such an important thing and it's such a different feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it really, it, it liberates us, I think. Yeah, sure. like see, seeing um, seeing actors, like, you know, theater people and um, dancers and, you know, people be really great at what they do in a different discipline and it's just like and being around it it's just oh, like yeah. this is this is wild yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you feel part of something great you know it's like yeah. the point where we feel like oh man this is like something way bigger than all of us but it's like in us we just don't get to send that little part out all the time but when we yeah. do it's like you feel it's special yeah. yeah yeah absolutely um i wanted to ask you um, about your orchestra audition um, for the Michigan Opera Orchestra. What was that like stepping in? Was it a blind audition? Um, was, was it a blind audition when you did it? And if it wasn't, do you think that may have played a role into you getting the job or not? Mm -hmm. um, it was completely, completely blind from the resume on. Wow, okay. Yeah, so like as soon as... Um, and I, I found that out obviously after after the audition. Um, resume round was blind, first and second um, prelims finals. Um, so it was. I mean, that was my maybe second second or third audition actually, maybe second audition. Um, and. Um, the auditions I had prior to, I believe the resume round, I don't think that was blind. Um, but it's, it's interesting because I haven't been able to sort of experience an audition, well, not that I know of, experience a professional audition where it's not blind and then be discriminated against. Mm -hmm. um, so to be able to just play in front of a screen and just put it all out there not, with not like worrying about like, oh, are they, are they, are they looking at like how short I am? Are they looking at, yeah. you know, this little black girl, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. there's always that, which, you know, yeah. which I deal with like on the daily playing in orchestras, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. like to just be able to play and them just make a decision on my playing that, I mean, that it yeah. felt really, really good. I can like, say that. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you about that. Like, how much do you have to deal with? Because as trombone players, we got that stigma to deal with, right? And then mm -hmm. I would imagine the female musician has that stigma to deal with, you know? And then black female, you know, there's like different layers. I'm sure people look at you, you know? like. Yeah. Oh, she's a female playing. Oh, she's a black female playing. I'm sure they don't see that enough. So they don't really have the proper expectation. How have you dealt with that? Whether it be teachers saying like, you know, I'm sure like you got to make sure you use a more air, you know, all of that kind of <laughs> foolishness that goes yeah. on around. Like, how have you dealt with that? And how have you kept, kept yourself grounded to mm -hmm. who you are while dealing with that kind of adversity? Hmm. Yeah, I I can first answer, how do I keep myself grounded? The first thing that I had to learn to do was separate um, microaggressions from like um, me understanding where my growth, where I need to grow and 
um, or understanding like my worth and, and what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's what keeps me grounded. Um, but I think it's important to understand that when people talk about uh, being a woman or being black or being the only one of whatever it might be, um, it's not, it's usually not gonna be an overt thing. It's not like, oh, look at you black girl playing the trombone. You know, like, it's right. never like that. <laughs> right. Experiences are always micro and those micro yeah. things sort of like build and they pack on and they become weight, right? Yeah, right. And right. so um, the things that I would like say that I had to sort of cope with are like, um, just like, I think my hair was a big part. Like hmm. um, my identity, um, you know, black women, their, their hair is a huge thing. And so I was always concerned about a hairstyle and how someone will receive it in an orchestra. Hmm. So like I'm sitting there playing principal um, in an orchestra uh, for like NEC or whatever. And, you know, this old, like an old white conductor comes up, he's about to conduct me. And like, I'm always concerned about that first Inter mm. that first impression and I'm yeah. just like what is that going to say and you know and those are the things that you have to sort of be liberated from mm -hmm. so I to liberate myself from my hair liberate mm -hmm. myself from um also you know being the only female like people say um black or woman right like what are you like trying to fight for what do mm. you you know what yeah. I mean yeah. And I realized that I was going back and forth between those two things. So like when it comes to my, when it came to me being female, it was always a thing of like, are you strong enough to play this part? Like, mm. can you, like you would pay attention to assignments and like um, orchestra assignments and you would find like, oh, like I'm not, oh, I'm not on the big pieces. Like I'm not on, mm -hmm. like if there's, if there's Mahler and there's like a new piece and then there's like, um, maybe like a Bernstein. I'd be on like the Bernstein because Bernstein, yeah. Bernstein always has a little jazz in it, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and then if like, when I finally got to the point where, okay, like, I'm not sure if this is strategic, but this is the things that I think about, like, well, I finally got to the place where I can, you know, be on these like bigger pieces, like Mahler or uh, Bruckner. And I'm like, oh, but I'm not playing principal. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, so I kind of get used to like, um, well, like the, the stigma of like, will Robin be able to handle this part um, from a sense of like, does she have the lungs to blow it down? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is, it's, it's just so ridiculous, you know, yeah. and I'm going to say it for, I know we have a lot of trombone players that watch, mm -hmm. you know, the people might not know anything about this, but that has absolutely nothing to do with playing a brass instrument. Yeah. Like it, yeah. absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. And I learned this from a woman, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like the, my best teacher uh, is a woman named Jan Kagerice, who mm -hmm. saved my career um, from vocal dystonia. I dealt with that. Mm -hmm. She literally saved my career. Like it, it's yeah. not about any of those things at yeah. all at all yeah. and I wish I knew better you know mm -hmm. then I know better now but you know I wish I knew better because that whole stigma I think m oppresses people's mindset of what they can achieve you know yeah. and like you said that first impression that's something I've never thought about you know yeah. um a, a conductor standing up there like what are they going to evaluate your hair now when I did have twists and dreads like that was back in my early 20s. Um, yeah. I did think about that, mm -hmm. but I never put the female thing, like that's just something that I don't have to think about. So I would hope that, you know, the viewers that watch this take that into account as well. There's so many layers of things we have on top of just playing music, you know, yeah. Lord forbid, like I'm the same way. If I miss a rhythm, it's not because I missed the rhythm. Is it because I'm the black guy that missed the rhythm? You know, yeah. just like being yeah. like I I think that was a huge thing, like being definitely because I was I experienced a lot of being singled out. Um and it, it in orchestra, like in you know, like in band in general, like being singled out is like it's like can you actually like it's like okay, everybody be quiet, everybody stop. 
Right. Now, can you play this part? That's what it really comes down to, right? Yep. And so when you are singled out, it's always like, well, am I being singled out because you want to make sure that I'm supposed to be here? Or am I being singled out because you actually want to hear the... It's like yeah. all those thoughts, like, why am I being singled out? Because yeah. um, I had an experience in high school um, in Georgia, I'm um, saying Georgia because it's not Atlanta. This was in right. Georgia um, at a festival. There is a difference. There yeah. is a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> I was at a festival and I was playing this part and it's all white conductor. He, he told me to stand up. He's like, it was so dramatic. He's like, stand up. I was playing principal. Mm -hmm. I beat all the white boys out in, mm -hmm. in the festival. He's like, stand up and play the part. And it's a part of like a plunger and everything. You know, I played it and he was like getting upset, angry with me. I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? And then, there, then I have like the guy next to me. He's like, I think it sounds fine. I don't know what's going on. And uh -huh. then the trumpet player had, um, the white guy had a solo and destroying it. And he's right. like destroying it. And he's like, <laughs> and he does it in a bad way. You know? Right, right, yeah. And, um, <laughs> The conductor has nothing to say, but he wants to hear my part. He has me stand up. And I later found, like, I was fortunate to have a band director in the in the uh, audience. He was like, I think it was this that he was trying to get at. But it was just like yeah. the, the drama and all of that, just because you see this young Black girl here in this position, no one else, you decided to make a fool out of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, it, it, it's, it's a little trauma that you know that feeds the um all of the thoughts that go through your mind on a daily basis but yeah yeah um, and, and and it kind of drives us to be that much better because exactly. we've been in these traumatic situations and we yeah. know hey if anybody's gonna get singled out guess who it's mm -hmm. gonna be <laughs> you right. know and it leaves us like well, I'm not going to mess up, you know, like exactly we take this weight on, you know, I've talked about it in other episodes when I was working on TV with Harry Connick, I felt like I had the whole weight of the black community on my show. I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm man. on TV, oh. I'm a trombonist, like I'm the only one doing this right now at this time, I got to represent, you know, it was, it was heavy, but it was important. Yeah. It was really yeah. important. That's um, so true. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this. As as times have changed now, fortunately here in America, we've had some administration changes. We have our first black female as vice president. Hopefully we'll have our first black female president sooner than later. Um, when you see things like that, how does that empower you within your own field? Because mm. you talked a little bit about it, just seeing it you know, can help you take that next step. How does seeing someone in that high of a position help you with your music? Yeah. I think, um, like, when people ask me, like, who do you look up to? I always mention, you know, obviously, there, I don't, there are not that many Black female trombonists um, um, to look up to. Um, so a lot of people, like current people that I uh, think about are people outside of my field. Um, and so I like look at all of the industries and all of the different disciplines and I, the best black females like in those um, sort of areas. And those are the people that I, I sort of like, um, I, I call like my mentors, right? Like my own little mentors within my head and so um because i i think i realized that um in in america the the higher and higher you get in your in your individual um discipline um, there starts to be less of us you know we're excluded and there becomes less of us and so i i feel so hard for um like the kamala's and um, the Angela Rise and like, you know, people like that. I, yeah. I feel so hard for them because it's like, there has to be a similar experience that we're experiencing, <laughs> mm, yeah, you know, when yeah. it comes to like dealing with, um, you know, just whiteness in general. Yeah. And so, um, so I, it's a great deal of um, 
comfort and encouragement and inspiration comes from people like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it only pushes me to, um, to understand that the situation is, is the situation, you know, like yeah. you're in, you're in the, you're going to be around whiteness and you're going to be fighting it for the rest of your life. Um, yeah. But you can still excel and you can still be you yeah. and, and be at, at the, a good level of um, success that you want to be at. Yeah, yeah. That's such a, a great way of putting it, because I think a lot of times people will chase a, a status or a mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. And I think the older that I've gotten, the less and less I care about your title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, your your title yeah. is just what it is when you're doing that thing. Yeah. You know, all the other hours of the day, like you're not that. <laughs> you yeah. know? So what are you? And, mm -hmm. and that is what I'm going to judge you off of. And yeah. I realized that when I had to deal with adversity coming back from focal dystonia, so much of my identity yeah. was as a trombone player. Yeah. Now that I couldn't yeah. play the trombone, it was like, well, dude, who are you? Like, what, yeah. what are you? What do you have to offer? I'm into photography too, you know? So I thought, okay, maybe... I have to do this now, but I know mm -hmm. I wasn't done with music and I had mm -hmm. to dig into people outside of the discipline to find different sources of inspiration. A guy named David Goggins, who was like a former Navy SEAL, but he has this book that's like ridiculous. Hearing his story and what he came from is crazy. Kobe Bryant, similar, you know, like rest in peace mm -hmm. to him, but he was somebody that I looked to for inspiration just because of work ethic. You know, yeah, I'm reading stuff that he's like, if I'm in the gym at five, there's no way somebody could outwork me because I'm yeah. the only one here. You know, yeah. so those little type of things is what really helped me build my own self. And I'm imagining it's it's very similar to what you're saying. Yeah, that's it's so crazy because I think during this year, during the pandemic, um, I think we've been a lot of artists, um, black artists have been forced to say like, who are you more than ever because mm. you know we exist in our different worlds because of our talent right mm. and you see as soon as like that institution or um anybody reaches out to you and say during this time and they're like hey can you come play for us and it's like oh wait why do you want me to come play you right. want me to come play because all this stuff is going on right. and so, <laughs> you need to save your, you need to save your whatever <laughs> Right. <laughs> and then, so like once you're being asked that over and over again, you're like, oh, like you have to detach yourself from like what you do. Like trombone, I have to detach myself from the instrument in order to figure out like what is like, what is my purpose and who am I and like, what do I want? Yeah. All those questions that sort of like have been plaguing like me during this time, which I, I find is like, is really relatable when you say that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, it's kind of like this series here, you know, it, it was mm -hmm. born out of that, you know, yeah. like what, what, and I didn't realize what it would become, but mm -hmm. now I realize just how important it is because of, you know, the response, I didn't realize people needed this, you mm -hmm. know, it wasn't like, hey, I like, it's like, no, this needs to be heard. These stories need to be told. This perspective needs to be out there because that's yeah. the only way things are going to change, you know, otherwise Absolutely. it's, it's yeah. definitely going to stay the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. What um, advice would you give to a young female musician who's mm -hmm. up and coming, who they have the adversity to deal with as a female, but maybe they're female of color and there's that extra layer um, of things that they have to worry about. What advice would you give to them to help them maybe not have to go through some of the things that, you know, took you a while to break out of, like you said, eventually you started, you found your identity. What advice would you give to them in their development in that area? Yeah. Um, I think that, I think that it's, it's important to know that your identity, um, shouldn't be, is if you make your identity all of you, then you're just going to be like sort of 
driving yourself into these holes, right? Mm. Because you're going to be sort of like fighting the inevitable and qu- constantly asking, que- asking questions that you're not in control of and mm. all of those things. I think it's important to search for your identity, but only to use it as a tool. Mm. Mm. And I yeah. think that the tool being that okay, it's, it's like a, a tool, like is it, it's affirmation. It's like, this is who I am. This is what I can't change. This is what I can change. But more importantly, because of this, this is what I can do, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're like, if your identity is like, yeah, I'm a female and I'm against all of this adversity. And that's, your, that's what you're, it's, it's like recognition. But if that is the end of the thought, if that is yeah. the only thing that you have, then you are not, it's not, you're not going to make it. It's not, it's not enough. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's not enough. Wow. That's, that's heavy. See, this, this is yeah. why we need the female <laughs> perspective because that, yeah, that's just, I can't say it any better. You know, um, that is, that is so important. Um, and I think as, as men, sometimes just being a man, <laughs> you know, eliminates a lot of those things, you know, even the, the way we speak about things, you know, it's it's from this male perspective, and that becomes our expectation on far too many things until we see otherwise. Um, yeah, you know, and I really think that people like yourself are exposing otherwise. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I think it's important to to see not just to see ourselves, but to see the the fullness of ourselves. You know, it's yeah. not just about a little bit there. It's not just, oh, there's a black woman in the orchestra. No, there's a solo, a black female soloist. There's a black female conductor. There's a yeah. black female section. You know, it's mm-hmm. we're we're touching it now, but it needs to go deeper, you know, into yeah. the future. Um but yeah. we have to start by seeing it, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. first. Yeah, um, I, I think that's so important. Um, Robin, I, I really like, like, I don't even know, like, how to, because I just want to keep, like, picking your brain. <laughs> you know, I want to keep picking your brain. But I'll ask you uh, one more thing. Um, maybe this, this might feel kind of weird, but to the colleagues out there um, that may see somebody like yourself in a position um, playing in a section or as a soloist or something like that, what would be one thing that you would want them to know that they can't see from the outside? They can't judge it based off your playing. They can't. What's one thing that like the inside Robin piece that you would want them to know? Oh, that's, that's tough. That's tough. Um, I guess I would say, um, uh, I guess I would say that I, I really care about personal connection and perspective. Mm. And I value those things because the combination of different perspectives and um, sort of like personal connections can sort of be like, the conduit to like, just like um, the next level of growth for really anything. Um, Because like within connection and different perspectives, there's understanding. And so like, I feel like um, to seek that first, then you'll be able to understand me as a person, you know, what I care about, why I'm here. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you you understand me as a person, then you'll, I think you're just going to care about the same things that I care about, which is yeah. like, you know, <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, you. I can convince you, I yeah. can convince you of like some things that are really, really blow your mind when it comes yeah. to um, like our position in this field and like our experiences and why like culture of, um, classical music and um, really just this industry in general can change and should yeah. change. Yeah. Oh, all right. So all of you out there take the <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, it's a resource. And I think like 
you know, now with everything that's kind of gone on with the social injustice and different things like that, like people have asked, how can I help? You know, people who mm-hmm. aren't, you know, what can I do? Now you have resources, you know, now you have people that you can ask questions to, like, don't assume, ask the yeah. question. And nine times out of 10, we're willing to talk to you and, and let you know what's going on. But yeah. that is really how the, the gap is going to be closed, you know, mm-hmm. and things are going to move forward, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Robin, I, I really want to thank you so much for coming on this episode and sharing your time, your amazing perspective. Like, I, I could literally sit here and keep talking to you for another 30 <laughs> minutes, but, uh, but I'm gonna let you go. And I wanna thank the audience for watching this. I, it was such an honor. Robin is my first female guest and she won't be the last. As you can see, this perspective is absolutely needed in the conversation. So. Robin, thank you so much again thank for coming you. on. And I want to thank everybody who stayed through and watched this episode. If you want to find out more information about Robin, you can click some of the links in the description. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, The Chop Shop. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time at The Chop Shop.